Hello, everyone. It's good to have you. Um, welcome to Recovery in Action. And we have, I have some guests with me today, and I'm just tickled to death that we're all here and that we're doing great. And I just want to let everybody know that there's still hope in recovery. I know this pandemic has been quite devastating to a lot of people, but we want you to know that there is there is still people recovering and we have a lot of going on. Um, we want you to know that uh, Better Days through Jesus Christ is uh, they are doing uh, via Zoom. Uh, uh, Brianna's Hope is uh, doing via Zoom meetings and their choices are doing meetings twice a week. I believe they're at four o'clock. Uh, and they're doing that via Zoom. Uh, we have, so there's a lot of going on uh, with uh, the Zoom and, and we're still reaching out to people. We're still helping people, encouraging word through uh, House of Ruth Fresh Start Home. If you want to do that, the girls are doing encouraging words to keep uh, everybody focused on what they're doing. Uh, hopefully soon with all the, uh, stages that the governor is doing that we're going to be back on track and we're going to be um, meeting face to face but we will definitely meet face to face with social distancing <laughs> so we'll wave at everybody <laughs> and uh, but we we really want to encourage you and we know it's tough times but we just want to encourage you uh, to know that we're going to get through this uh, mm -hmm. some way or somehow, especially with God's help, we're going to get through this. And I just want to remind everyone, make sure and wear your mask, wash your hands and just stay six feet apart. I mean, we, we have to do it for our families and everyone that we're around. Mm -hmm. So I just want to introduce some ladies that I have with me today that I'm really excited about. And we just want to let you know what's going on up here on the hill. <laughs> the House of Ruth would never a dull moment in this place. <laughs> I don't know how you're doing, but around here, it's exciting times. And uh, we have Amy and Amy. <laughs> and then we have Tanya and Misty that's with okay. me today. And we're just going to talk a little bit about... Uh, recovery and and what it's what it's like to be going through what everyone is going through right now because it, it has been tough times I mean sometimes you feel like maybe there's no one that you can talk to you know but uh, but we're fortunate here we have each other and we encourage one another and we support one another uh, we do meetings together IOT together uh, classes I mean Amy has got us on our toes. So, <laughs> but uh, I'm just going to start out by uh, just telling everyone, uh, I, I just wanted to kind of give you some encouragement, uh, maybe talk about uh, things that has happened uh, to make them want to uh, start in recovery. Most everyone here has children. So uh, we know the struggles of recovery with their children. They're working. Some of them are in school. Um, some of them are starting new jobs. So we just want to take the time to let you kind of meet uh, these ladies and, and see how amazing that they are. <laughs> so we're going to start off with, I think we'll start off with Tanya. <laughs> I know she loves that. Um, so, but just tell us a little bit, because you do, you've been doing encouraging words for people. So speak yeah. from your heart. Um, my name is Tanya now, and um, the House of Ruth has done a lot for me. Um, I was an addict for 34 years. I've been sober for 21 and a half months. Um, this place has brought uh, life into me. I'm figuring out who I am at 46. Um, I finally got a driver's license after not having one since 2007. I uh, was blessed by buying a car at a very decent price. And I'm going to school to get my GD and recovery coaching, peer reco recovery coaching license. And certification. Certification. <laughs> and then I'm going to college once I get my GD. So this 
the house of Ruth has opened so many doors for me. God has opened so many doors for me. He opened the door for me to come here. And Miss Sharon has just been a godsend to me. She's um, um, a mother figure for me. I've been uh, back in touch with my grandkids and my kids because my kids are grown. And it's just wonderful. And the pandemic was, it's bad, but then there's good things that's come out of it because the Zoom meetings, we've been able to have meetings all over the United States. Um, my sister is actually works in a rehab and has been in recovery for seven years. And we got to do meetings through her, a women's meeting and Heroines Anonymous and stuff through Zoom. So I thought that was amazing, you know. Where's she at? She's in Illinois. So, yes. yeah. So, I mean, that was great. I even did a couple in California. Um, and I think it's great. You know, it, you know, it's kind of it's sad that we're all confined, but I think it's very interesting that I mean, you can even get online and do ones in Japan. I've seen some all over. I mean, it's just it's really neat. And we've done a lot of good meetings through here through zoom. And I would really like for that to just continuously go yeah, through, through absolutely. the pandemic yeah. because, you know, all my family lives out of state. So I thought it was pretty neat. And, um, I just, I love being at the house of Ruth. It's, it's brought, um, enlightenment to my life. I've uh, realized where I fall short, my shortcomings, my character defects, and I, I work on them every day. I find something else, else new about myself because when I come in here, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know who I wanted to be or what I was going to be. And now I have a much more solid foundation. Um, I'm starting to transition more through the house and it's, it's just amazing. Um, the doors God and Miss Sharon's opened up for me and, um, I'll be eternally grateful to everything that's been done in this house with me because without this house, I don't know where I'd be right now. I really don't. And, you know, Tanya, she was saying, you know, there's so many times and a lot of people, they don't think about this stuff, but I mean, there's people that drive that I had one girl that had never had a driver's license and she was like 48 years old Yeah, <laughs> and she got her driver's license when she, you know, came to the house with her. Like, Do you think it's time? You know. Yes. <laughs> So it's one of those things, I mean, whenever you really, um, really want to do right, you'll do right yes. because getting a driver's license, that's important. Yes, it's very <laughs> <'Cause> important. <laughs> you don't want to get pulled over and you don't want to go to jail, you know, and, and it's responsibility. And, and I'm proud of the girls when they, you know, when they recognize, you know, because you can drive without a driver's license unless you get caught no one's ever going to know. So I, I think it's great when they take accountability and responsibility for those actions. Yeah. So, and, and getting a car and yes. going to school and paying bettering, support. paying child support. <laughs> yeah. So many people take that stuff for granted. You know, it's like, well, I don't, you know, but then when you get clean and you start thinking of the accountability and responsibility that you have, I mean, and you feel good about it. It's mm -hmm. like, I want to make things right. I want to do these things. And that's, that's a part of recovery. Yes. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Misty. Oh. Well, um, the new kid on the block. Yeah. yeah. I've been here, what, about 40 days or so. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And, um, I came here, I was lost and I, all I knew was that I had been lost in addiction for 15 years. Um, I have kids, I have grandkids and I was failing at every end of my life and I pretty much hit rock bottom. I knew that if I was ever going to be anything, now was the time to take heed of it. And I heard about this house through an acquaintance of mine and I inquired about it and it just the way it played into my life was it was meant to be because yeah. I had tried other rehabs and you know because I came from jail to here and they said I had been clean too long and you know I wasn't accepted because of the insurance I had so it just happened that the day I called and talked to you that you had a bed open yeah. and and it was wonderful and I felt like you know I related to you right off the bat mm -hmm. and and ever since I came here, I just felt like, you know, one of the girls, like I felt, I fit right in. Yeah. Like I, you know, I've been here forever. I feel like, yeah. I feel like this was the best decision I ever made in my life. Cause now I'm finding mm -hmm. myself. I've learned, I learn more and more every day about myself and how to apply certain things, certain tools through Christ and through this program that I can use on an everyday basis. And for me, I feel like there's nowhere else to go but up from here. And I'm excited. Amen. That's right. Yeah. Good. Good. Amen. That excites me when I hear people say that. <laughs> I, I, I love that. I do. So, Amy, 
you have some exciting news that's up and coming. <laughs> so, um, I came to the house four years ago and went through the program, and then I was gone for a couple of years. And I came back. I wanted to come back and get back to the program because I know it works. I know it's where. It's okay. <laughs> Tears it's okay. are healing. Yes. Yep. <laughs> it's where I built my relationship with God. And um, I mean, we went to church all my life, but never really had that relationship with God. And I found that here. And um, I want to get back to this house because I know this house works, this program works. And um, um, I have been offered to go as an interim executive director at Spronza Transitional Living Home in Greensburg. So Wednesday, I will be going there for 30 days um, to pass on everything I've learned here and the structure here. This program is amazing. Ms. Sharon is beyond amazing. And to celebrate 10 years at this house, the 10th mm -hmm. year anniversary at this house is just, just, beyond it's just god and there's no other explanation for it and it's just exciting to be part of this and part of these women and um when we don't have our bio biological family supporting us the spiritual family is beyond yes it's, it's just it's just god that's all that can be said about it mm -hmm. and God's just been blessing me and blessing me. And I said, now he's spoiling me he's beyond <laughs> blessing me <laughs> he's spoiling me now and um <laughs> Everybody needs spoiled. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's just been amazing the prayers he's answered. Even I look back and when I was at this house originally, I used to pray that I loved all the women to um, go to my church. And I went to Clarksburg Christian and other people's churches. And we all we all came from different church backgrounds, a lot of us. And with this pandemic, it's been amazing that we've been able to do that on Zoom yes. and see yeah. each other's churches and we wouldn't have been able to do that otherwise. Right. You're and visiting churches without leaving yes, the house. Yeah. Without even leaving the house. And, <laughs> and having the restrictions and different things. So I've just I've just seen so much good come out of this pandemic. I mean, there's a lot of awful things I know, but it's just amazing all the great things that have came out of this and the the hundreds of thousands of views of seeing like I was just speaking to my minister at Clarksburg and he was he was just amazed at the people that used to go to church are now coming back on and the people, new people that have joined. And, and I know they had over a thousand views each Sunday now, and there's not going to be a thousand members coming to that church when they'll be back. <laughs> <It's not. laughs> but people from all over the world are watching it. And it's just looking at the good and everything. And it definitely outweighs the bad. And if we just concentrate on that, um, everything's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to be good. As long as we got God in our lives, things are going to be good. That's yeah. right. Yeah, that's that's right. right. Amen. <laughs> and Miss and Sharon's family. Yes. That's the key. Have to watch. I'm the watchman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Amy, tell us a little bit about yourself and this pandemic or whatever you want to talk about from your heart. Um, being at this house has um, opened my eyes a lot. I've uh, learned some responsibility and accountability and learning how to live a sober life and just take it step by step be a better mom for my kids um without god it wouldn't have happened because i i'd hit rock bottom and i'm blessed to have a place in this home um i'm blessed to have miss sharon as a mother um, I have a lot of kids. Yes, she does. <laughs> yes, you do. Yes. <laughs> Some the same age. <laughs> <laughs> she treats us very well. Yes. Um, that's all I've got. Yeah, but you know, uh, I was thinking about when Amy was talking about, you know, how we visited other churches and things that we've done and and through Zoom. And, you know, the Bible talks about you know, what is meant for evil, God can take it and Amen. make good out of it. Absolutely. And yes. I know people are struggling and I know, you know, when you watch the news and you, um, you know, you hear them talking about China and how they sent it, but you know, China may have sent it here. I don't know that, but I mean, this is what they're speculating, you know, but God took 
evil and has turned it around for good. And I amen, believe that. Um, yes, we have had losses. Yes, we have had, uh, but we've had miracles too. You know, one of our close friends, Joel Conway, I mean, I he is, um, yeah. I mean, he is a miracle. He, yes. you know, got pneumonia and then when it went into the coronavirus and then, you know, and he was on a ventilator and the prayers that went up for him and, and just everything that happened. I mean, and he's home now and he's doing well and mm. he's weak, but he is, he is thriving through yes. Christ. And, and, you know, the thing about it is he's, he's a living testimony. He's a miracle. And, and I pray for the families that, you know, hasn't had the miracle that, you know, has lost loved ones and people are still struggling and it's not over, but we can go through things like this and we can get through them through the help of God, through the support of each other, through loving each other, through praying for each other, through helping one another. And, and, you know, with with the women and they're talking about how they're going out and they're you know you're go, you're continuing your education you're continuing your education you're starting a job and you're the new kid on the book <laughs> 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 so but, but all that stuff you know being said i mean god is still things are still happening you know good things are happening you know i was helping with my grandchildren to help them with their schooling and stuff because i mean moms my daughter has uh i mean she's become the mom the wife the housekeeper the teacher the you know the provider the you know stay home mom at work and and you know it's hard i'm i'm not you know uh playing it down at all it's hard it's been a hard time for everyone but i'm telling you through through christ and through prayers and and through support of our loved ones, we can get through this, mm -hmm. you know, and I believe, you know, and we have the, the men and women that are working in the hospitals and the police officers and the EMS, my yes. goodness, how blessed are we in this community to have, you know, to have them and, and that, you know, to just their, their relentless hours that they're putting in and, and just to help us you know, and, and we are so appreciative. And, um, and as she was talking, this is our 10th year and I'm so yeah. excited. I cannot wait till we can have <laughs> a party <laughs> to where everybody can come. <laughs> and, uh, we want to show off, you know, things that up here that, uh, that the community has helped us with. And, and we couldn't have done it without you. And, and we have the Isaac's house, we call it. Yes. It's the house next door is completed. Um, and we're just waiting on um, the UEA. They just, you know, they helped fund it. They gave us a grant. I mean, they've been, it's just been phenomenal how that house, it's beautiful. Yes. And, and we're just ready to move people over there. <laughs> can't wait <laughs> we want to have a big house opening you know a grand opening and and we want people to come and be able to tour and, and just see the good things that has been happening during this pandemic that we're still like i said we're not we're not missing a beat up here on the hill no nope. And we're a lighthouse on the hill. That's <laughs> what Vonda That's Bishop so tells us all the time. She says, we need a lighthouse up there. And uh, because we are, we're a beacon. We're shining out into the darkness. And we're, we're encouraging people. And we're wanting people to know um, that there is encouragement. So, and, you know, when we were talking a while ago, I mean, like you're getting ready to, you know, go and, and you're going to put in, pour into some women, you know, in another community. And, and I think it's exciting to, to see, you know, that, and I've always used the comment, you know, I'm, I'm raising roots, you Plant know, that seed. planting that seed. Planting that and, seed. and, you know, and that's my goal is, is to have women, you know, open houses, go into other communities, you know, do, do what we're doing. And, and, and it it's just amazes me, you know, that that's, you know, and that's something that Tanya, she wants to give back, you know, yes. that's why she's doing recovery coach. She's, you know, she's wanting to, to give back to the community and, and it's, it's so possible. 
it is so possible. So what do you think is going to be the first thing you tell them girls when you go over to <laughs> the rules? The rules. <laughs> yes. Let's look at the handbook. Yeah. Let's do now, that. Now, handbook yes. point system. <laughs> I really feel I've been really thinking about that a lot. And um, I wanted to tell them I've been where they're at. Yes. I've been there and they're at and hope after addiction. And there is. And I want them to know about my inner peace that I feel and the joy that I feel in my heart and how I got it. Yeah. How I got it. How, you know, surrendering everything to God and and making everything so good in my life. You know, I don't I hardly ever get stressed. I hardly get anxious. I just, you know, just roll with it because God's got this. It's not gonna help being upset or anxious or anything or or just go in behind, just go with it, you know, just go with it and just know that the devil's going to come at you and at different things when you're doing good. And like my saying, I keep saying is devil, I'm not impressed, you know, get, get under me. Just, you know, just keep following God's word and doing what's right. And, and you'll have that happiness yeah. and that joy. And I just, I, I wish I would have had this a long time ago, but I would never go back because no. I would never be where I am now. You know, everybody kept saying, where would you go back in life if you could go full time back? And I'm like, I wouldn't. And they're like, you wouldn't take back everything you've been through? And I said, no, because I'd be scared I wouldn't feel the way I do today. I'd be scared that I wouldn't, my life wouldn't be in God's hands the way it is now and all the blessings and the spoiling I get now. And it's just amazing. And I just, I just want to spread that to everyone um, and let them see that in me and want Want what? I want people to come up. People before I came up to me was like, "I want what you have." Mm-hmm. Like, well, here's how we do it. First, the handbook. Let <laughs> <laughs> yeah. me the Bible first. Then the handbook. handbook. <laughs> Let me get my prayer. That is the handbook. That, yeah, <laughs> that is the handbook. That, right. that exactly is the handbook. But it is. It is. It's just following God's word, and um, it works. And that's one yeah. thing you know that's not changed through this whole pandemic. It's is God's word, you know, yeah. it has stayed strong through this. It doesn't change. And if we stick by it, we, I mean, we're going through all these changes in the world now. And, but that Bible is saying the same. He's saying yeah. the same to yesterday yeah. and today and tomorrow. That's Absolutely. the truth. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. God, you helped me because I've been struggling the past couple of weeks with wanting to use, yeah. you know, and I've went to Tanya. It's just, yeah. And he's, he's gotten me through it. Because I could have just left. Yeah, no, no it helps to. too. Just having somebody <laughs> yeah. pray with you yeah. and have somebody to vent to. Mine was I, I let Tanya hug me. <laughs> she don't. She don't let <laughs> people touch her, her. Yeah. and that was a really cool that she did that, and it just it made me feel good that she can reach out to me like that and be comfortable enough for me to hug her. But I wanted to add to what Amy said because I even had shirts that ha- made that said this. I got it says healed and delivered on the front and on the back. It says God never wastes a hurt. And I, and like she said, I will now, I would never want to change where, how my life was. And I grew up in a very addict home. My parents are still struggling their addiction, but it's made me who I am today. And it's made me have the, the feelings and the desire and the want to help others down their, their struggles and their ways. And, you know, because I, I don't care what anybody would say to me. I wouldn't be shocked or surprised because I've been around all walks of life, you know, so I want to be able to to give back and if I wouldn't have lived that way or been brought up that way I wouldn't be who I am today be to be able to help people down their journey so yeah God never wastes a hurt he doesn't waste a hurt and you know you were talking about and 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 that's I I want to commend you on that I'm proud of you for saying you know you have struggled yeah, so yeah. many people won't tell people you know man I'm really struggling yeah. and and that's what that's what we need to let people know if you're struggling, tell someone what you would do. I mean, from your heart. I mean, just speak to someone because someone's watching the show that is yeah. struggling. Yeah. Amen. And and just tell them what what to do. What do you do when you struggle? I just pray. You know, I I read my Bible. I go talk to Tanya or even you, Miss Sharon. It's yeah. You know, and I just I, I'm playing the tape through. Amen. You know, because I know if I do go use, I just threw everything I've done away. I threw my marriage away, my kids away. So it's, I just have to pray about it. But you find someone that you can talk to. Someone that you know you can trust. Yeah. 
and and sometimes it's a simple conversation yeah, so that will bring time. us will bring us back to reality yeah bring us back to man i, I don't want to lose everything i've been doing and when you're in that whatever's triggering you or whatever is causing you to want to use you know look at what's going on and just be like listen i got to walk away from this yeah. i got to stop this i can't do this there was a young lady that was in a conversation with some of her family the other night and that's what she told him she said i can't do this i can't do this and i was so proud of her because they were bringing back mm -hmm. all of the garbage and baggage from before and she said listen i'm doing me right now mm -hmm. i can't do this and sometimes that's where we have to get we have to say listen you know i'm 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 taking my life back. You know, God is helping me and I'm taking my life back. And, and you got to set your boundaries. Yeah. You have to set your There's boundaries. I don't care <laughs> who you are, how old you are. Yeah. There's got to be boundaries. You got to say, listen, I got to stop this. You know, these conversations, uh, whatever it is, these phone calls, these, you know, Facebook, whatever. Sometimes you just got to clean your contact list out on Facebook. You'll be like, listen, you know, I can't, I can't be a part of this. I can't do it because if you, if you want to have that clean heart yes. and that, that pure walk with God, you, you have to cut sometimes it, and it hurts. I know I've had to cut my family off. Yeah. My own parents because they're a trigger. Yeah. And that's why I just recently told somebody, um, I need, I need stepping stones in my life, not stumbling blocks. Yeah, absolutely. And I've got to have that. I can love them from a distance yeah. but if they're not going to be a stepping stone for me i can't have them in my life right now yeah or what you said if they add or yeah. multiply to your life keep them yes. if they subtract or divide yeah. get rid of them. get rid of them and that is so true yes, it is it's black and white you yeah. can't have a gray shade right now no no because it has to be add or multiply or subtract or divide if, if they take away from you you don't need them in your life Nope. You need people that's going to help you, push you, get you out of your comfort zone, encourage you, encourage you pray with you, uplift you. Uh, uplift you. Yeah. I mean, if they're if they're continuously taken away from you, you know, destroying you, putting you down, then there's there comes a time that you have to say, but you know, listen, you know, this it's enough. Enough yeah. is enough. Yeah. And yes. My sobriety isn't yeah. worth it to me to no. risk just because I want to no. have a relationship just with you. Just because, yeah. And then when you do, and then you're destroyed from that relationship, you've lost on all aspects. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. footholds turn into strongholds. That's right. Yes, they do. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. This has been good. I've enjoyed this. <laughs> yes. I really have. <laughs> They were really scared to do this. And I said, no, we're just going to have a round table discussion. And, and it, because people are struggling, people are, th this is a hard time. And like I said, I'm not making light of anything, but the only thing I want you to know is there is hope. Yes. And up here on the hill, we're slinging hope, not, <laughs> not hope. hope. <laughs> And, and we just want you to know that uh, we, we, we do pray for you. I mean, uh, yes. when we have prayer, we, we'll pray, you know, people, everyone that is struggling, please, Lord, help them, you know, encourage them, send someone in their life that can help them. And that's our prayer for you today. Amen. And reach out, find someone you can talk to, find a sponsor, find a good church that you can watch. If you won't go to church, watch them on your uh, phone. But find someone that can help you and encourage you. And and we want you to know yes. that we, we're we praying for you and there is hope in recovery. Yes, These is. ladies are proven. So God We've bless you and we will too. see you. <laughs> Thank Bye. you. Bye.